This video is how to tell a story for YouTube. How should you structure your story? Well, first thing to notice is what I did at the start and the words that I chose. They are the same as what are in the title, How to Tell a Story on YouTube. And that's because YouTube, as you will have noticed when you've been scrolling on your phone, has the ability to subtitle your video automatically. So it knows the words I am saying. And one of the things it will do is work to see whether my words match what's in the title. So I need to decide the title of my video and then say it in the opening piece to camera so YouTube goes, okay, right, he's doing what he said he was going to do. So that's the first thing. Secondly, you might see a lot of people going, hi, I'm so-and-so, I do this, welcome to my channel, none of that. I get straight into it right at the start because Let's be honest, it's the content you're interested in. You don't really care about my history and my background. I'll put that in later with a little bit of a plea to subscribe. But my point is, get into it quickly. I've noticed quite a few videos that will do a kind of a day in the life. Maybe somebody's going on a long walk or a long cycle ride. And it always starts the same way. Maybe some kind of time lapse stuck under a tree. Maybe some sort of slow time lapse. But then they go back and they, you've got them making the morning coffee, big close ups of the coffee cup going under the drip machine. And frankly, I've come for the long ride. I haven't come to watch you do your morning routine. So the temptation is just to skip on until we get onto the bike or onto the walk or whatever. So, Think about your content. Think about what people want to see and don't labour the element of it that is extraneous. Oh, and if this looks, feels and sounds a little different to normal, I'm not using my normal microphone system. I'm using the microphone that is built into the Insta360 ONE R and I'm using it with its GoPro type lens rather than the 360 lens which has a screen facing towards me, and I can make sure I stay in shot. Incidentally, the route I'm following is an old coffin route, and I'm going from Loch Shiel End over to Strontian, but way back in the day, the coffins would have been carried the other way, out of the populated areas where most of the mine workings were, and taken back over, and then down and onto the burial islands that are on, uh, on Loch Shiel. I don't know if you saw what I did there, but it's what filmmakers call giving a, a sense of place. You don't really need to know the detail of where I am in the Scottish Highlands, but my description coupled with the map gave you context for this walk, gave it a kind of a narrative, and that structure is the starting point for the filmic structure that then goes on top. You might say to me, well, I'm going off on a, on a long adventure. I have no idea what's going to happen. That's the story. That's what you say. And you structure it as such. Obviously, you get shots as soon as you can of you riding or walking past camera, get all that kind of stuff. And then just wait until you get to a really scenic bit. And then, as they say in the business, shoot the out of it. You know, really go to town and make the most of it because it's the scenery and you in that scenery that's going to want to make the pictures. I understand why people clamp a GoPro onto their handlebars, onto a chest harness and then just film everything. But it's not very interesting to continually watch a POV. I'll use that technique in certain situations, but... I tend to speed it up if possible. In my grammar of television, I suppose, no shot really should last longer than five seconds unless it is absolutely fantastic or it's a developing shot. It's going somewhere, something's changing in front of the camera, in which case, yeah, then if it's good, keep it. Now, as a consequence of that, you need a heck of a lot of shots. So, 
you've got to remember to do them. You've got to remember to do the two basics. You've got to do them at key points when it looks fantastic, at moments when something is changing, perhaps when you're going from off-road to on-road, and you've got to do it when things go wrong, especially when things go wrong, because quite frankly, that is where the gold lies. That's what people want to see. Quite soon as you're riding or walking along, you start thinking of things to shoot or things to say. Looking ahead, you start scanning the ground and going, okay, I could put the camera there, go back and get a shot of me going past that. And yes, sometimes you have to go to extraordinary lengths to get a good shot, including leaping across a river. Or you think, you know what, I should explain a little bit of what this is. Now we're just coming up to a, a place where I know we'll be able to do a little bit of an explainer. That's the quarantine mine. And here we are at quarantine. Now you won't have seen what I did there, but I haven't been filming for 20 minutes and I used the fact of a scene change to move us on and I could have told you now quite a lot about this and we could do lots of close-ups of things so I'm talking about this. There's a, there's a way of thinking about telling a story that I always think is a bit like a washing line. What on earth do I mean by washing line? Okay, so I'll explain. The narrative, the main part of your story, the map, the, the shots of you cycling or walking past camera, they're all the washing line that's taking you from point A to point B. The stories that you tell along the way, in this case the little nuggets that I'm dropping in, they're the washing that hangs on the line and they are the scenes that you have to look for when you're making a film of anything. If they're all tiny little inconsequential handkerchiefs, it's going to look silly those little things flapping around in the breeze and no one's going to stay to listen to them. So some of those need to be, need to be interesting. So they need to be bigger towels or big sheets hanging on your washing line. They might take a bit of time to tell. And if they do, they really need to be better interesting stories. The smaller inconsequential ones, stopping for a coffee somewhere, they're part of it. They break up the tapestry. As long as you have a few big ones, you can afford a few little ones in between. And then you're back on the bike or on your foot or on your swim and just shot getting you from one to the next. There you go. The Willis washing line theory of storytelling, which incidentally also works when you're writing a travel article. Gates are good punctuation points. Help break things up. Let me introduce you to another concept that filmmakers use, and that is thinking time. That is the gaps between the washing, that part of the washing line that, that runs between the scenes. Because that lets you, as a viewer, digest what you've just heard. It doesn't have to be long, a couple of seconds is fine. Uh, and very often it'll be when you change the music. Because so many people just plaster music right behind everything. And that doesn't work. Music sets the tone for a particular scene. It should enhance. It shouldn't just burble away in the background. So, so use it uh, and then fade it out and then start it again. And that will let you know, or your viewer know, that something has changed. One scene has ended and another one has begun. We've reached the Biala, the pass between Loch Sunart and uh, Loch Shiel. And you can just imagine hundreds of years ago, six strapping blokes from the village down here carrying the coffin of their loved one or their workmate or friend up here and just taking a breather, resting the coffin down on a flat rock like this just before they started the descent down towards Loch Shiel. If you've enjoyed this, you might want to check out 
The cameras that I use, if you click that link there, it'll take you to that video. It would be fantastic if you would subscribe. The little round one will, will help you do that. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Uh, and here's another link to some more videos that you might find useful. Until next time, goodbye.